Welcome back for day 9 of the Blender Basics Bootcamp. Today, we're going to add some basic camera animation to our trophy scene, and we'll briefly cover the graph editor and dope sheet as well. So, let's get animated! My name is Chris Folia, I'm your Stream Scholar, welcome to Stream School. Animating in Blender is actually really easy to do if you just want to do something simple like moving an object or in this case, a camera. So let's dive in. First things first, I'm gonna go to the animation workspace by going to the top of the screen and clicking on the animation tab. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and re-enable my screencast keys because they have a tendency to disappear when I switch tabs, and I want y'all to be able to see what I'm pressing while I'm working. So in the animation workspace, we have two 3D viewport panels. Down here, we have a dope sheet panel, which lets you scroll forwards and backwards in time. And down here at the very bottom, we have a squished down timeline panel, which has some playback controls, and it lets you know where your animation starts and where your animation ends, which you can also adjust right here if you really want to. So I'm gonna go to the left 3D viewport panel. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view. Then I'm gonna hold Z and go to rendered preview mode just so we can see what our trophy looks like as we animate the camera. Now to actually animate the camera, all we have to do is tell Blender that we want our camera to be right here at this point in time or frame if you wanna use the right terminology, and then move forward in time, move our camera and tell Blender that we want it to be right here at this point in time or frame. Then Blender will automatically take all of that data and fill in everything in between, which is awesome. So to actually do that, I'm gonna hit seven to go to the top orthographic view and to actually tell Blender that I want my camera to be right here at this point in time on this frame, I have to insert something called a keyframe. So to do that, I'm gonna hit I, and that brings up the insert keyframe menu. And here we have a whole bunch of different options. The only ones you really need to pay attention to are location, rotation, scale, and then the mixtures of the three. So I wanna animate the location and rotation of my camera, so I'm gonna add a location and rotation keyframe. And here, you'll notice down here on the dope sheet, we have some yellow dots, and that says there's a keyframe here. And if we go over to the right, our location and our rotation just turned yellow. And that's saying these values are now solidified for this point in time, and there's a keyframe here. So to actually animate this, I'm gonna grab the playhead by clicking on it, scrub all the way to the end of the animation at frame 250, and here you'll notice the location and the rotation turned green. That's saying the value hasn't changed since the last keyframe, but there's also not a keyframe here. So to actually animate our camera, I'm gonna hit G to grab it, I'm gonna move it back, and here I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, then I'm gonna move it on the X axis with GX just to center my camera again. Click to set that, and here you'll notice some of the values turned orange, and that's a warning. It's saying that these values have changed since the last keyframe, but there's no keyframe here yet. So if you move off of this frame without setting a keyframe, your camera is gonna snap straight back to where it was on the previous keyframe. And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna click the playhead and you're gonna notice that my camera just jumped straight back to where it was on our first keyframe. And I just lost all of that work I just did. So to actually move it and tell Blender we want it over there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Z twice to undo and get my work back. Now I'm just gonna hit I to bring up the keyframe menu again, hit location and rotation, and now you'll notice that we have some dots on the dope sheet and our location and rotation are yellow again, which is exactly what we want. So now if I hit space, you can see that our camera is animating, which is perfect. And if we wanna change the speed of this, that's actually what the dope sheet is for. So I'm gonna hit space to pause my animation. Then if I click on this keyframe key right here, I can just click and drag it to move it. And now my camera is gonna move really fast. But I don't want that. I want my camera to move throughout the entire shot. So I'm gonna move that back to frame 250. Now you're also gonna notice if I scrub through this really quickly that the camera sort of speeds up and, or eases in. And then towards the end of the animation, it slows down or eases out. Now, I don't know about you, but when I picture a camera move that's going on throughout the entire shot, I want my camera to move a nice consistent speed. So to explain why it's speeding up and slowing down and show you how you can change that, I'm gonna jump over to the graph editor. Now, don't panic. I know my first instinct when I hear the word graph is to panic too, but I promise it's not that bad. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and make my dope sheet a little bit bigger. I'm gonna click the drop down right here and I'm gonna change this to a graph editor. Here we have a bunch of different lines but I'm just gonna click the object transform and this is just gonna be for demonstration purposes right now, but I'm gonna click on this eyeball, drag down to hide all of them except for the X location. So over here, I'm gonna hit A to select everything, then period to zoom in on it, just like you would do in the 3D view. Most of the controls in Blender are pretty consistent throughout the software. So here you'll notice we have this curved red line and how the graph editor works is this line only represents the X location of our camera. The graph editor gives each parameter that you animated its own individual line. Then up and down on the graph is the value of that parameter and left and right is time. So for instance, if I go back to frame one, you'll notice that the X location of my camera is 5.6114. And if we look at the graph and we look at the numbers on the left, yeah, that about makes sense. It's down here at 5.6114. And if we go to the end of our animation at frame 250, you'll notice that our location on the x-axis is 7.2993. And if we look at the values on the left here, yeah, that also makes sense. And if we scrub through, you'll notice that Blender filled in all of these values automatically, and that's what the red line is. Now, by default, Blender uses something called a Bezier interpolation. And that's a really fancy way to say this is a curved line. Now, the, the reason the camera is slowing up or speeding up and slowing down at the end of the animation is because this line is curved. And that makes sense if you think about it. If we go to the start of the animation and we scrub forward a few frames, you'll notice that this line is a really flat. If we look up and down, this value hasn't changed very much at all. But if we go to the center of the animation, and we scrub a few frames, you'll notice this line is a whole lot more diagonal, which means the camera is jumping in space a little bit more than it was at the start of the animation every single frame, which means it's moving faster. So then, if we go to the end of the animation, you'll notice it flattens out again, which means every single frame, this value is changing almost not at all. So to manipulate this line, you can do it the same way you would change a Bezier curve when you're modeling. You can drag these handles and you can move them around. And now our camera is just going to sort of snap into place on the X axis here like that, or it's just, it's just not going to ease in, or we can move this around and warp it however we want. We can make it super ease in just by scaling these handles. These controls are exactly the same as controlling the Bezier curves when you're modeling. But if we want to make our camera go one consistent speed, we don't want the default Bezier interpolation. So to change that, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these channels back on. I'm going to hit A to select everything, period to zoom out. And here I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to interpolation mode, and I'm going to change these to linear interpolation. So now if I hide everything and zoom in on my X axis, you'll notice it's a completely straight diagonal line which means this camera is now moving the exact same amount every single frame, which means it's gonna be a really consistent speed throughout the entire animation, which is exactly what I want for my camera move. And those are pretty much the bare minimum basics of animation in Blender. Other than that, you can also move the keyframes and stuff in the graph editor using the same controls as always. But yeah, those are the bare minimum basics of animation in Blender. Uh, and you're not just limited to animating the location, rotation, and scale either. You can animate just about anything you want in Blender. If the parameter has a dot next to it, you can animate it. So for instance, we could animate the color of our trophy. We could animate the roughness of our trophy. We could animate the brightness of this light. We could animate the rotation of our world image. And the, 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 <laughs> there, there are no limits. The possibilities are endless. So to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and animate the color of the trophy logo. I'm going to click once, that'll select the glass, click again, that'll select the trophy cup. So I'm going to go down to the materials panel, and here I'm going to make sure I'm on the base metal cup. I'm going to click the arrow next to base color, and here we have the two colors that we're mixing. I have my silver, which is most of the cup, and the pink, which is just the logo. So for instance, if I hit shift left arrow to go back to the beginning of the animation, you'll notice we have a dot next to this color. That means this property can be animated. 
So if I click the dot, that'll turn into a diamond and it's a filled diamond, which means there's now a keyframe here. There's also a yellow outline around the box now. Now, another way you can do this is hovering over any parameter you want to animate and hitting I on the keyboard to insert a keyframe if you really want to be rebellious. But I feel like clicking the dots a little bit more intuitive. So here I'm going to scroll forward to 125. You'll notice the outline is now green and the diamond is empty. So here, if I change this, the outline will become orange, although it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to make my logo something like a nice orangey red. Then I'm going to click the diamond and that'll set another keyframe here. Finally, I'll go to the end of the animation. And now I'm going to change this to like a nice green or something. Click the keyframe. And now if I hit space, you'll notice that the logo is going to animate from pink to red. And then it's going to animate all the way to green at the end of the animation. And just think about how cool and how easy that is to do in Blender just for really simple animation like this. It's awesome. Now, if you want a more in-depth look at animating in Blender, I have an entire introduction to animation in Blender video on this channel where I take you through a traditional animation exercise and teach you how to animate a bouncing ball using the graph editor. And I'll link that in the description down below. But otherwise, I think this scene is really shaping up and think it's looking pretty cool. I'm actually going to go ahead and go back to my first frame right click on the color block and say clear keyframes because I don't want my logo color to animate. But otherwise, I think we are about ready to move on to the next and final video in this tutorial series. So I'll see you all in the next video. At this point, you should have a nice camera motion in your trophy scene. But I'd also like to encourage you to mess around with animating your trophy as well. Maybe you could have it rotate or even fall over. Have fun with it. If you found this video useful and want to stay tuned for day 10, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell. I'll be releasing these basics videos on a daily basis for the duration of the course. And if you want to come hang out with me live, I'm live at least every Friday over at youtube.com slash oraclefish. Also, if you want to download download my example files or just support what I do here on the channel, make sure you check out my brand new Patreon. Link in the description. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream scholar and the class is out.